computer. So welcome everyone to our Zoom session this afternoon uh, for caregivers um, or for people who are supporting caregivers. It's an opportunity for us to gather together and to uh, maybe share some stories, to be able to find some support and some different ideas and some self-care tips and wherever else the discussion might take us over the next little while. Uh, so I want to welcome Gail Brimacom, who is from Westminster United Church in Whitby, and I've known Gail for a number of years. I started at uh, Westminster United um, going there on Sunday when Christopher White was the minister there. So, um, Gail, welcome, and thank you. I'll let you introduce yourself a bit and then just take it away. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for everyone uh, taking the time this afternoon to be together. I'm really feeling very happy to be with you. And um, I would like to start, uh, first of all, by helping us center ourselves or focus on what we are doing right now. And so I'm going to ask you if you would plant your feet firmly on the floor, if you can, and Get yourself in a comfortable position with your back straight, but not stiff, your hands on your lap. And if you're comfortable, uh, close your eyes. Now, the instruction I'm going to give is to inhale for four, the count of four, to hold your breath for the count of four, and to exhale for the count of four. And we'll do that three times. So let's begin with a nice deep inhale. Two, three, four, hold it. Two, three, four, exhale. Two, three, four. Another time, inhale. Two, three, four, hold it. Two, three, four, exhale two, three, four, and one more. Deep breath in, two, three, four, hold it, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four. Thank you. Now, I'm going to read an acknowledgement of Native lands, and then I will introduce myself. With gratitude and respect, we acknowledge that we are situated on the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of Scugog Island First Nation. Today, this land is home to many Indigenous peoples from across Turtle Island, and we respectfully acknowledge the diverse history and cultures of all those that have inhabited and cared for this land and continue to do so. We strive to build meaningful partnerships with all peoples of this province as we search for collective healing and true reconciliation. May it be so. So I'll, I'll let you know a little bit about my history just because uh, that will help you to understand where I'm coming from and hopefully give you some idea of the experience that I've had that makes me excited to do this today. Um, I'm a retired uh, professor from Durham College. I developed the community health nursing program there and I taught it for 17 years. And uh, during that time, I was a parish nurse at Westminster for 10 years. And most importantly, I've been a caregiver for my father, my mother, and more recently, my husband, Bob. So I hope that some of what I've learned over this time will be of help to you. And I also hope that we will have an interactive discussion with ideas coming from each of you as well as from me. Uh, um, Jeff has already laid the ground rules of confidentiality. Really important that we respect each other and avoid judgment or advice. 
um, not interrupt each other, <laughs> and uh, just feel safe and confident that we are together today to share our ideas and uh, be open about what it is uh, that we're dealing with. So I'm going to start with my screen and I'm just gonna ask Linda Black, would you mind telling me where you are, Linda, and what brought you here? Who are you caring for? I'm currently in Pickering. Uh, Jeff brought me here because uh, he used to be the minister at Dunbarton Fairport United. And um, I'm caring for my husband who has a lot of health problems right now. So I just was hoping that I was gonna get some experiences or things to share or hints or tips to, to help me go on because my daughters are all gone from the house now so it's pretty well just me okay okay are there specific issues you're dealing with linda that you want us to address sort of medication compliance trying to get him to take his medications they're all blister packed but it doesn't matter that it's the same thing every day it's more or less i have to cough it up and give it to him Mm -hmm. Right now, he's currently in the hospital in emergency because he had a little heart thing happen to him the other day. And when he got in there, they oh. also found out he has diverticulitis. So uh -oh. got two okay. things running along there and they're keeping him because something about the enzyme in his heart, um, the numbers keep going up every time to take a blood test. So they're keeping him to watch that. Okay. So I'm getting a little break, actually. So. Oh, all right. <laughs> um, the last thing I'm going to ask you is, are there any particular self-care practices that you already have in place for myself you mean yes uh -huh. well i try to get out i belong to a couple of seniors groups that i get out and do things with um i'm still working part-time so that does get me out of the house but uh with this this last recent thing off to the hospital it was a good thing my daughter happened to be home because I literally stepped through the door from work and she goes, the ambulance is coming. Oh my. So now I have a hard time trying to choose um, things to do for myself because I always have to have almost like a babysitter to make yes. sure. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Linda. Uh, Jane, would you mind uh, telling us where you are, who you're caring for? And uh, let's start with you next. Now, I think you need to unmute yourself. Yeah, I'm in Bowmanville and oh. uh, I'm, I'm not caring for anyone now, but my mother is 89 and she's here and, yes. and uh, she's in great health, amazing health, doesn't take any medications or any, or any medication at all. But, uh, but I know lots of people that are caregivers, so I wanted to see this so that I could be empathetic to others who are caregivers now and Excellent. to know what I can do to help other people that are caregivers. Perfect, that's wonderful because <laughs> you're going to be a resource. <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay, so next we have your mom, 35154. <laughs> what is 35154's name? <laughs> that's Siri, Siri. Buyer, Sari. Sari. How do you spell that? S A R I. Oh, so, okay. All right. Hello, but Sari. I oh, Hi. Hello. Hello. Hello, Sari. So Hi um, there. I'm just wondering what brings you to this today, what you would like to gain from what we're talking about. Um. I don't have anything to really ask you anymore. I was um, caring for my husband for um, many years um, and we made out quite well, I think. And um, he gave me lots of freedom to do things that I wanted to do if I, if I wanted to do something. So I have nothing, nothing to complain about. I just would like to know how other people fare and can I help at all or give them any help? Okay. That's all. all right. I, I personally at the moment, I don't need any help. Thank you. Okay, but you would like to help others. That's what you're telling me? Well, that would be nice, yes. Even if you can suggest things that, um, 
I might be able to pass on, might be able to pass on. <clears throat> Good. Well, uh, there's going to be lots here for you to consider then. And um, I haven't heard yet from, let me see, I have to get on my screen. Uh, Sheila, do you mind telling us where you're coming from and who you're caring for? I'm totally deaf. There, I'm, I'm not caring for anyone at the moment, but uh, over the years, I've uh, I've helped with other caregivers caring for family members. You know, yeah. like we have a big extended family, yes. and I know at some point it's coming down the pipe for all of us. So, you know, it'd be good to know. <laughs> it's mighty, you know. Where are you? Where are you talking to us from? <laughs> from Florida. <laughs> oh my goodness! How wonderful! Sorry. Lucky you! Lucky you! <laughs> so that's not time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just went outside because the dog is is looking longingly, wanting to come out, but he may be barking at a squirrel. So I just went outside, so he, he can't see me anymore. <laughs> Thank you, Sheila. So, is there anything in particular you want to take away from today, then? Ah, uh, hmm. Well, it's funny when when you asked about self care. I mean, I've always made sure uh, that that I do get out uh, every couple of days and do something for myself. I've always done that since I retired or you just, to me, you just become a big lump at home. Anyway, you know what I mean? Like long, long right. before now. So, right. um, hmm. well, I know, I know with, uh, with my cousin, I, uh, I had no idea. I used to go and see my aunt every, every couple of weeks on a Friday, you know, and, and my cousin was always there knitting or, you know, just sitting beside her mom. And the one week I, uh, <clears throat> it, something was wrong with the car, so I, I ended up going the next Friday. Well, when I got there, she said, where were you? And and that's when I realized how much she can. She said, she said afterwards, you have no idea what it means to have your smiling face across the bed. And I, I had no idea at all. We would just chat about things. And if Annie Irm felt like piping in, she did. If she didn't, she could just lay there, you know. But I had absolutely no idea how much it meant to my cousin, who was yes. there every single day, every single day. The whole while that her mom was in in the home you know oh. what it meant just for me to be there and visit with her you know like just you know okay thank you for that Sheila. all right so next now let me see um ralph do you mind talking next hello everybody hello gail it's nice to uh, connect with you again i met you at one time through the former osher presbytery so yes I'm part of your presentation in the past so Okay, well, thank you. But I continue to be a, a caregiver, which I have been for a lot of years now. It's my mother. My dad has passed, but my mother is still with us, and she uh, has a lot of issues that we deal with. The past year has been especially busy because she had a fall a year ago, January, and had some injuries that we had to get over, and we're still working on those. There's still some things going on from that, so just a continuing process between a sister and I who are the main caregivers for her my other two sisters are here when they can be but it's just an ongoing thing so and mm -hmm. i get myself out when i need to because i have sisters that i can spin off with and they can come and be around and good if need be so good okay very good yeah. is there any one thing you really want to hear about today ralph no i don't think so i think it's just an interest in it and i've always been a caregiver so i just there to support others mainly to right. in the process Okay. All right. Thank you. So Jacqueline, would you speak next? Well, I am presently not caring for anyone, although I have in the past, but I'm here from the point of view of somebody who's going to need care in the next few years. So I'm kind of looking at it differently. Okay. All right. Where are you calling us in from? Where are you today? Hi, Rome. Oh, Tyrone. Okay. All right. Now, have I talked to everyone? Who haven't I spoken with? Jeff, would you like to tell me something about your situation? Yeah, there's a number of them, Pat and Diane and Lauren and Beth and Linda. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah, I just have them, them all on my screen. How I need to get the gallery view here. There we go. All right. That's better. Okay, so let me see. Who did you say then? We can start with Pat's iPad. 
<laughs> okay. That's Just, Pat Woodley voice. <laughs> I'm not getting Pat's iPad. I'm just wondering why that is. If we're starting oh, there you are. Okay, Pat. Hi, Pat. <laughs> Hi. Got... Thank you. Okay, Hi. so uh, what brings you here today, Pat? Uh, thank you. Um, I and my siblings are caring for my mom who's ill and we're the main caregivers for her. We're now uh, looking after 24 seven. So, uh, we have support services in, but we're, I'm just, I've come to look for any other ideas or whatever, uh, advice you can give. All right. And I'm calling from, uh, I'm at my mom's house in Hampton, but I come from the type from Jeff's community. All yes. right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you now. All right. Who else haven't I talked to? Lauren? Lauren, where are you, Lauren? In Bowenville, in Bowenville. Just a minute. I care for my wife, Elizabeth. Uh, okay, I'm going to have to go back to speaker. Okay, Lauren, um, have you got your camera on, Lauren? I have no picture. I don't know how to turn it. Well, in any case, then you would would you talk talk to me about uh, who you are caring for? Miss Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. She has early stages of dementia. Uh huh. Okay. And do you have any help in caring for uh, for Elizabeth? Not really. No. Okay. Are there any uh, services, resources that outside of the home that you're using? Not at the present time, no. Okay. All right. All right. So let me see then. Um, hmm, hmm. You can go to Diane Woodley. Okay. I'm not. Oh, there's Diane. Hi, Diane. Hi. 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 I think if we do turn our videos on, probably you can see us easier, but we can go in and out as we need to, I guess. Oh, well, I'm happy to see your face. So <laughs> thank you for having your camera on. <laughs> yeah, just out of the shower. Um, yeah, so I'm Pat's sister. And um, I'm here also because we're doing caregiving for our mother. Um, and time the value of time right now is becoming very critical so is there something in particular you really hope i will cover today while you're on this line not not really <laughs> Um, just mostly listening and learning because from here, I will take what I learn and, um, with my profession too, I run into a lot of people who are in need of care and a lot of them don't have the support system. Like I know many people here are from our, our church community, our village and our area. And we are very blessed to have such a support system. I mean, we know each other and we, we know where we've come from and we know where we're going mm -hmm. and we're there for each other. And um, um, mm -hmm. I have clients that I look after that don't have that same support system. And I try and probably I overextend myself. But that's what I do. <laughs> and, do, you mind, uh, do you mind telling me the nature of your work? It's real estate. Okay. All right. Thank um, you. And, um, and yeah, right immediately, we're looking after our mother. And um, she's, we're very lucky because she's still independently at home with us being there. Yes. It's 
mostly. I think it's um, companionship right now for her mm -hmm. because her care is fairly minimal on the sort of nurse side of things. She's not connected to any tubes or oxygen or anything, but mostly needs us there. Okay. All right. Thank you. So you and you and Pat are sisters, correct? I got correct. that right. Okay. Yep. All right. So Jeff, how am I doing? Have I have I uh, no? Together? There's there's three others uh, plus myself. Uh, so <laughs> I'll just uh, Beth. Do you want yeah. to share a little bit because Beth had mentioned she may have to pop out also. Okay. Um, okay. So Beth, if you can turn on your sound. I don't have that on here. She okay. may have popped out. I don't know. Um, um, Linda Grande. Oh, yes. There were two Lindas. Mm -hmm. I talked to Linda in Pickering. Yes. Hi there. Can you hear me? There yes. we go. Yes. Okay. Sorry. I, um, uh, I, I don't know how to turn my camera on. <laughs> That's fine. Don't okay. worry. Okay. Um, so I have um, elderly parents now. Um, they're in their late 80s. My issue now is that they don't live close to me. They're out of town. Um, so I'm trying to facilitate some, you know, medical appoint appointments with my father in particular and uh, this kind of thing. So I just feel like it's we're at the beginning of this um, and uh, feel just that I'm spread a bit thin. Yes. Okay. Um, is there anyone else helping with the caregiving in your situation? Um, I do have a sister and she does help me, but I feel that I, um, um, I do the lion's share at this point in time. Okay. Okay. Is there any particular thing you want me to cover today? Um, I I don't think anything in particular. I'm just kind of here to, um, you know, to get a sense of what other people's struggles are so that I maybe can prepare myself a little bit as time goes on. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, Jeff, who else is left now? Uh, well, we have Beth and myself. Beth, are you there? If you are, take yourself off mute. <laughs> I can ask her to unmute. That might come up. Um, and she may have stepped away from the screen for a moment also. Um, I'll just mention for myself, um, Sandy and I are both uh, helping with care with Sandy's parents. Um, and we're lucky they have moved into a new house uh, about six minutes from us, as opposed to having to drive into Oshawa and uh, my mother-in-law has just come out of the hospital after being in for 60 days and so has had to pretty well relearn to walk. And so we have all kinds of new machinery from the hospital services with Sarah's studies and um, wheelchair issues. And so PSWs, uh, some from the government that are not showing up. And they're calling and offering to send someone else, but it conflicts with the private one that my in-laws have hired. So there's issues like that. There's also a great concern for my father-in-law, who has just been diagnosed with early Parkinson's. And so he is probably the primary caregiver when no one else is there. So we're trying to uh, jump in as much as can we can. So I'm always concerned about him for self-care as well. Um, yeah. So as well as us, um, but at least we're not staying, taking turns, Sandy and I staying every other night like we were. Um, there's more independence now. So that's been a huge help for us. But there was a concern at one point for self-care for Sandy and I too. So just a lot going on trying to 
juggle being a minister also. Yes. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, it's uh, that seems to be um, lessening a bit more. But uh, yeah, so I'm very interested for some tips and ideas and things like that today also. Okay. Now, how about Beth? Has Beth come back yet? I don't see her on my screen. I see her there, but I have a feeling she may have had to step away because she said she might have to do that. So okay. she could just be in another part of her house. So, okay. All right. Well, let, let us then thank you very much for sharing some of your. Oh, I think we have one more. Oh, uh, uh, it comes up as C. Oh, Haas. C Haas. Okay. Yes. I see <laughs> that person now. Yes. Yeah, so. <clears throat> Hi, uh, my name is Cassie or Catherine. Um, I am not in a caregiving role currently. Um, I have been in the past when my husband was ill, but I have friends who, uh, three different friends who are all having situations where they are caring for parents. So I'm here in support and uh, also to get a fresh perspective on how to support those caregivers. Well, wow, thank you. Okay, all right. So now have we talked to everyone, Jeff? Yes, from what I see. Okay. All right. If Beth comes in, maybe you could let me know that. Sure. And I will uh, I will have Beth tell us a little bit about herself. Well, it's good to see uh, the ver the variety of situations that you people are in. Um, some direct caregivers, uh, some concerned about others who are caregivers, and what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to talk to the people who are actually doing the caregiving. And I'm going to ask you um, to just perhaps put up your hand when you have something to say and make sure you mute yourself. But when you look at the people that you, the person that you are caring for, what do you think that person needs? When you, look at them what is it that you identify as being a need that they have anybody like to suggest something the reason i ask this question is that it's important to identify what you think people need and also what they think they need <laughs> And so I'm, I'm asking you to think about, as you observe people who you are caring for, um, what you think they need. And I'm just going to suggest that it be very important that if you're having a conversation with that person, that you identify what you see, uh, what you um, think would be helpful and that you then talk to them about how they feel about that and uh, whether they would be willing to receive the help. And so the most important part of all of this is uh, listening, listening and observing um, the person and what their, what their needs are and uh, what kinds of uh, supports you think uh, are needed. So just to quickly get us through this, I'm going to just give you a list of all the possible needs that people might have. And so, and I'm, uh, I'm going to pass on some of my notes to Jeff so that um, you don't need to take notes for this, but let's just think about the fact that there are physical needs like assistance and mobility and getting in and out of a chair, getting in and out of bed. There's personal care like bathing, um, dressing and undressed, uh, whether one person can feed themselves or not. Um, there is the whole thing about, for the caregiver then, of food preparation, um, mental and emotional and spiritual care, transportation, foot care, shopping, laundry, house cleaning, all of those things come under the umbrella of caregiving. And recreation and social contact. Now I'm just turning my timer off because I want to know how long we've been going. Um, social and recreational uh, support is also uh, very important. Now, again, I'm going to speak just in this part, again, to the people who are doing the caregiving. 
And I want you to think for a minute about what your needs are. And depending on how, how long you've been doing this, um, you may have very clear ideas or you may be just discovering uh, what your needs are. But could somebody who is in that caregiving place talk about what you understand your needs to be? How about Pat? I'm not hearing you, Pat. I think we're having a little sound issue there. Sorry. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry, I just was, I just put my mom, I held my mom for this, so I wasn't here oh, for okay. a few right. minutes. Okay, sorry, I didn't, I, if you ask me something, I'm sorry, I missed that. No, that I, what we're working on right now, we've talked about uh, what we might perceive to be the needs of the person that we're caring for. And we've gone through a list of physical, emotional, uh, personal care, transportation, foot care, all of those kinds of things. But now I'm just asking those of you who are in the caregiving role, have you identified what your own needs are? And Pat, could you start us by talking a bit about your situation? Sure. Um, I'm with my sister, very fortunate to have a good support system. Of my siblings, I'm the person who's retired, so I have the most flexible time. And every all my other siblings try as hard as they can to work around their schedules, and we fill in. Um, I also have some medical background, so I can speak the language of medicine a little better. And so I go to the appointments and uh, try and coordinate the care. So I, I, and now I forgot what you even asked. I'm sorry, I don't even know. That's okay. The question <laughs> I was asking you was, and, and I'm realizing that you have considerable family support. Um, I'm, I'm just wanting you to focus for a minute on what you think your own particular needs are. Oh, I think just uh, taking a break like being able to go home for a solid time and know that somebody else is caring for my mom, that I, it's, it's totally out of my mind. I don't have to think about her. I don't have to worry about her because she's in the hands of somebody else. So that's just uh, time off. Yes. But time off is not just not being there, but it's time off knowing um, my loved one is cared for as well as if I was there. Yes. Perfect. Or better. Yeah. So that's, yeah. yeah. How, how about your own sleep and rest? Do you feel that you are able to get adequate rest? Um, mostly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mostly. Yeah. Uh, is there, but is, you know, I also think this, this is a time I will never regret, will never regret the time I put in now. If I'm tired, I'm healthy. That's okay. I'll recover. And this too shall pass. This yes. too shall pass when, you know, what, whatever. And, you know, when my children were not toilet trained and I was tired beyond belief, I knew that would come to an end. And so you can do it. You just dig deep and you can do what you have to do. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so I think so. I think, yeah, I'm, we're doing fine. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, let me see now. Is there any anyone else? Linda, even though your husband's in hospital, have you been able to identify specific needs that you would have? I just find that when he's home and uh, because he's not very mobile either, that I get exhausted sometimes and I just need I would need a break. So I try to get my girls to help out, but now like two of them are now out of town. And I have the other one, she has two children of her own. So she does come by. I see them on the weekends, but it's still not a long time for me. And now that he's had this latest incident, I'm sort of afraid to um, go off and leave even for a day. Mm -hmm. Now, um, mm -hmm. so we're talking about getting a, a lifeline. Yes. Um, 
because somebody said, "Won't he not call 911 himself?" And I go, "I don't really know," because he's he was sitting. If I hadn't been home, yeah, if I had not uh, been home yesterday, my daughter had not been there. I don't know whether he would have called 911. Mm -hmm. So, okay, all right. Um, let me see now. I just want to go to someone who is currently caring for uh, a loved one and uh, let me see lauren lauren are you there yes would you be able to talk to us about what you think your own needs are as a caregiver yes. Patience, the big thing. Having to answer the same question over and over. Okay, yes, okay. And so how does that make you feel when you have to do that? Frustrated. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you think about your own personal needs then, um, would a little bit of time away be a, a help to you? Uh, would you be wanting to find some help and support so that you don't have to be answering the questions over and over again? Over a walk with another person every morning. It helps get away. And when she's up and awake, I just assume be here. You would like to be there when she's awake? Yes. Yes, of course. How about your own sleep and rest, Lauren? Are you getting enough sleep at night? Yes. You are. I've never been a good sleeper. You've never been a good sleeper? <laughs> no. Okay. Resident, so resident you're getting family. as much as you need, in other words. Is that it? <laughs> okay, so... I guess the thing I'm trying to do is I'm trying to look at the person who needs the care. And I'm also trying to look at you as caregivers. And those of you who are not in the caregiving role are, are also going to be looking at your friends in this way. The people that you're wondering about, how are they doing? You're going to be looking at whether they think they're getting enough sleep and rest, whether they're getting enough adequate nutrition and support from others and time away. So I'm going to be talking in very specific ways about the person being cared for and the caregiver. But those of you who are here for information, I think you will just take what I'm talking about and see where you can apply it. So there's something I wanna speak about next that, um, that will apply to those of you who are direct caregivers. And some of you have kind of alluded to it a little bit, I think. Uh, but something that I don't think gets talked about nearly enough is the concept of loss. The fact that you have had a relationship with this person prior to now um, that is quite likely very different <laughs> from the one that you have at the moment. And I think it's really, really important to identify what isn't there anymore it be it companionship, um, be it conversation, just what isn't there uh, for the person uh, to be the same as they were before now. So I would like you to recognize that there is a sense of loss in all of this. And you may not have identified that yet, but when you think about it, I think you will appreciate the fact that you're caring for someone who with whom you had a very different relationship earlier on. The other thing I wanna talk about is the fact that there's a, often times a great deal of isolation. Um, if you're providing 24 seven care, it's very, very tough to be finding time for other things and other contacts, other people, other supports even if you're, uh, if you are, doing this 24 hours a day, seven days a week, there is a sense of isolation that you're going to feel. And finally, I just wanna talk about the stress that's involved, being responsible 
for the care of the person, being responsible for making sure that they get their medications, even though they don't want to take them, um, being responsible for the safety of the person, whether or not that person is using some kind of mobile device or whether they're sort of moving from furniture to furniture. Um, I think uh, there is a certain stress in just always being alert, always wondering what needs to be done, what should I be doing now, that kind of thing. So loss, isolation, and stress are factors in all of this, which I just want to mention. And for those of you who are thinking about your friends, um, this is something to take into consideration when you are uh, trying to support them. So the next thing I'm going to do then is go into self-care activities. And um, these can work for everyone, whether you're a caregiver or not. <laughs> so I'm hoping that even if you're not caring for someone right now, you are thinking about your own health and well-being. But for the caregivers, I'm going to remind you of what they tell us when we get on an airplane, that you have to put the oxygen mask on yourself first before you can care for someone else. And so I'm gonna give you a couple of really easy things that you can do many times a day, as often as you want, that are self-care strategies that I hope you will just take and use. So the first one is what we did at the start. Simply stop whatever you're doing, supposing that you can stop. <laughs> I'm not saying stop if you're in the middle of an important task, but if you're at the place where you're thinking, oh boy, I really need a break from this, then take a break. Stop everything for five minutes. Sit in a comfortable position, put your feet on the floor, take a deep breath, count in to the count of four the way we did and count out again, and do that for five minutes and use a timer. Have a timer to give yourself that period of time. And again, these are ideas that you can share with your friends. The other thing that you can do all the time, and sometimes you just do it reflexively, is just take a few minutes to slowly and mindfully stretch and make sure that you stretch every part of your body and take a good five minutes to just move every part of your body, move your neck and your shoulders right down to your toes. That is something you can do anytime during the day. And I'm just hoping that you will remember to do these things because when you get caught up in the caregiving, sometimes it, it is hard to just focus and say, just a minute, I need to take a break here. And then I'm going to ask you to think about the things that you love. What is it that you love that would actually provide you with a piece, a piece, a bit of comfort and support? Think about the people, the places, the things. Ask yourself, what helps? What helps me when I'm in the midst of all of this? Does listening to music help? Does lighting a candle help? Does writing a little note to a friend help? Does taking a walk help? Watching a favorite movie? Taking a nap? And I just like you to do that little inventory for yourself. And then make a point of choosing one of those things to do every single day, every day. Just commit yourself to doing something that gives you pleasure and gives you uh, some, some peace of mind and a little bit of a respite. So I'm going to give you, uh, I'm going to give you several websites which um, Jeff will pass on to you. And the first one I, I like is what called 13 Thoughts, 50 Ways to Practice Self-Care. This is available on the internet. You can all look it up. I'll give you the uh, website for it. But uh, 50, 50 tips for self-care. And if you can't find something in there <laughs> that would interest you, then I, I would think you're going to have to be very inventive and figure out what does work. But tips for self-care, including watch your favorite movie, go for a walk, treat yourself to a favorite dessert, call someone you care about, write a note, do a craft. I'm thinking about crafts in that all of us aren't knitters and sewers and all of that sort of thing, but I've got a box upstairs 
a shoebox full of pictures that need to be organized. And this is a good way to just take a few minutes, get out that shoebox and start organizing pictures. Something to take you totally away from uh, what it is uh, that, you, that you're doing. So um, 50 ways to practice self-care. The second way I'm going to suggest is thinking about doing mindfulness meditation. I was introduced to mindfulness meditation from the Alzheimer's uh, Society when I was part of a caregivers group. And I didn't think I could meditate. I thought my crazy mind is just going to be going back and forth. I'm not going to be able to focus. But I soon found out that mindfulness meditation was really helping ourselves to simply give ourselves a break, give our mind a break by focusing on our breath. And so that very first exercise that we did, and I'm suggesting you could do it anytime during the day, is on the website um, that I'm offering to you, Mindfulness Meditation, the New York Times, How to Meditate. And right at the very first page, they say, do exactly what we just did. Sit up straight, place your hands in a position, balanced position, focus on your breathing, and after one minute... Uh, gradually open your eyes and resume your activities. So mindfulness meditation, it may be uh, something that uh, is not familiar to you, but um, I'm recommending it simply because it was introduced to me and I do it now twice a day. I, I do it in the morning when I wake up um, and I have a guided meditation that I love that basically asks me to think about my body, to breathe into my body, um, to recognize what my values are, um, to recognize the gift of a new day, and, um, and set an intention for myself that I will live out my values and live the best life I can given the circumstances that I'm in. I do it again at nighttime, and this time it is simply to let my body relax and again, focus on breathing and just settling my body uh, for the night. Now, I also, I'm talking now about practices that can help us to center ourselves. And so I also read Richard Rohr's meditations every morning. And you may find something like that helpful. Jeff, Jeff writes things that you can read, right, Jeff? And I also think you might pick your favorite psalm and read that in the morning to get yourself started. 121, I lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. So I'm thinking about mindfulness meditation in many different ways, but basically what we're doing is giving our brain a rest. And that is very, very important. The third thing, and I again, I have a website for you, is a gratitude journal. And maybe some of you already do this. Um, but there are 40 uh, tips for how to think about gratitude. And the idea is that every day you would include uh, something that you are grateful for. And so uh, what about um, the people who are closest to you? Um, the people who are helpful to you. Um, what's your favorite time of the day? Uh, five people you care about. Think about people or things or places that you're grateful for and write it down. So this is another simple thing, easy to do. You could take a moment any time in the day and simply say, I am very grateful for a sunny day. I'm grateful for the rain, whatever it is you're grateful for, just say it and focus that way inward towards gratitude, as opposed to the external stresses and strains that you may be facing. Um, I've talked about adequate food and rest before now. Uh, if you're not getting enough rest, though, this is really important. And for those of you who are supporting your friends, I think it's important to kind of get, get to that and ask reach out, ask for help, um, 
accept and use the help that is available. Now, many of you are seeing that you have concern about friends and you're wondering about how to help or you are interested in helping. And so I think one of the things that you can be doing, those of you who are not caregivers, is simply talking to those people about their needs and how you can help them. Um, I'm asking the people who are caregivers to think about the resources that are available to you. Some of you have family, some of you have friends. Um, you all, I believe, have the church. Um, I'm going to be talking later about community volunteers and professional caregivers. Um, there could be all kinds of things you need help with. Transportation, meals, housekeeping, caregiving, identifying a team of people who might be able to help you. And then if you make a list of the things that people can do to help you when they call and say, how can I help? Give them the list and say, here are some things that you could do to help me. What would you like to do? And let them pick the activity that they would like to, to help you with. And that way you'll be identifying your needs and you'll be giving the person who is offering to help you a focus on something that they would really like to do as well. Now, I'm gonna say about when you talk to people about what your needs are, you really do need to be very specific. I'm going to um, talk to you a little bit about a personal example that I had. We have a, a friendly visitors group at Westminster United Church. And uh, I received a call and uh, basically the call was, um, could we come and visit you? And I said, that would be lovely. And I'd really appreciate a visit. Um, but I'm going to tell you that what I really need is time away. So if you would be willing to come and visit Bob and have a little time with him and I could leave the house, and go out and either go for a walk or do some shopping or something like that, then that would be the most help that you could give. So you see, the, the question came to me in a specific way. Could we do a friendly visitor visit? And I said, yes. And here's what I need it to look like. And so... And uh, they all did different things. It was really interesting. Some of them took Bob out for a walk. Some of them took him for lunch. <laughs> Some of them sat and played games with him. Some of them just talked and reminisced with him. And one of them said to me, you know, your husband has always been a gentleman. He insisted on making tea for me, the visitor. <laughs> so. I'm just saying to you, there's an example of when help comes your way, um, try and define what exactly it is that would be helpful for you. And don't be afraid to say it. And don't be afraid to say no to requests or demands that are coming to you. It's very important to figure out what it is you can and cannot do. And don't be hesitant to say no. I have my plate full. I can't do anything more. And then finally, I'm going to say stay connected with your social support. Could you have a daily phone call with somebody? Uh, do you need to have that? Uh, could, could you sort it out as to you're going to call them or they're going to call you? But that social piece is really important to, to deal with the isolation that is bound to be part of what is, is going on for you. And then finally, at the end of each day, I'm going to ask you, caregivers, to focus on what you were able to accomplish. Recognizing what you were able to do, where you need more help, uh, identifying the barriers, um, brainstorming solutions with whoever you can talk to. But at the end of the day, it's important to just review how the day went. Note if something made you feel angry or frustrated or resentful. 
and accept that you are a human being. You did the best you could. Nobody else can know what you're experiencing. Nobody else. And all of you people who want to support need to recognize that, that you can't really know. And I think somebody said it today. You, you can't really know what the other person is dealing with, but you can be there as a supportive presence. So at the end of the day, you have to realize nobody else can know this. Um, I'm going to figure out what I need in the way of help. Tomorrow's another day. I'm going to clean the slate. I'm going to let it go. And then finally, before you go to sleep, say one thing that you are gratified that you have for gratitude one one gratitude idea <laughs> one thing you're grateful for um, before you go to sleep so I'm going to just take a little pause now and ask you if there's anything up until now because now we're going to go into be going beyond yourself to the community, the support agencies that are out there and what kind of help is available. So I'm going to do that next, but I just want to know if you have any questions at the moment. Does anyone have anything they'd like to ask? No? Would you like to have a little break? Five minutes. Would you like that? Or should we just carry on? <laughs> what do you think, folks? Shall we just carry on and finish? Yeah, just carry yeah? on, sure. Okay, carry on. Okay. So the things that I'm going to talk about next are, are going to involve mostly other people. Um and they're going to go beyond, you know, your own paying attention to your own physical and emotional self. But the first thing I'm going to ask you is, um, is there a support group here? Because I'm going to suggest that one of the biggest helps for me personally was to be part of a support group. And um, I did that through the Alzheimer's Society. Um, because my husband had Lewy body dementia and uh, the Alzheimer's Society was absolutely wonderful. And one of the things that they did do was ask me if I'd like to be part of the support group. And I said, yes, they put me in touch with one. Um, I'm still talking to those people once a week. My husband died in 2021. And I'm still talking to them. We, we Zoom each other once a week. So I'm, I can't emphasize enough the importance of support from a support group. And I just leave this with you to ask you, is this something that you think is doable within this little group that's here today? I'm going to ask you also to think about the kind of respite that is available, the kind of uh, respite where someone comes in, uh, a companion, for example, or where you take the person that you're caring for to an adult daycare program. And I'm also going to suggest that there is the possibility and depends on your needs, there is the possibility to actually arrange a short-term nursing home stay, which would mean like a week perhaps, where the person who is being cared for can be cared for there and you can have a total break. So those are the kinds of things I'm going to talk about next. And, um, but before I do that, I want to read a poem by a friend of mine, Joy Cowley. She's a New Zealand writer, and she's written a poem that I think really applies here. It's called The Bridge. There are times in life when we are called to be bridges, not a great monument spanning a distance and carrying loads of heavy traffic, but a simple bridge to help one person from here to there over some difficulty, such as pain, grief, fear, loneliness, illness. A bridge that opens the way for ongoing journey. When I become a bridge for another, I bring upon myself a blessing, for I escape from the small prison of self and exist for a wider world. 
breaking out to be a larger being who can enter another's pain and rejoice in another's triumph. And here's the line that I think applies to all of us. I know of only one greater blessing in this life, and that is to allow someone else to be a bridge for me. And so what I'm talking about now are taking advantage of the resources that are out there. And for those of you who are friends, making sure that your people know about the resources and you can certainly use the contact information that I'm giving um, to pass on to people if you wish. Um, but I'm going to just now go to services and supports that are in the community, some of them very available, some of them free of charge, some of them have a cost. So the first one I'm going to talk about is Home and Community Care Support Services Central East. Now, <laughs> those of us who've been around for a long time know this used to be called Home Care. Then it was called CCAC, Community Care Access Center. Then it was called the LIN, Local Health Integration Network. Now it's called Home and Community Care Support Services Central East. And it's a government program that is, is paid for by OHEP. And with this program, you basically should be able to access home care, uh, PSW support, physio, occupational therapy, um, information and referral. All of that comes under the umbrella of, of uh, OHIP. Now, you can actually refer yourself to help home and community care support services. You can do that. Um, you have to be very, very careful about the needs that you are expressing. They need to be very, very clearly identified. Um, and I think we all know that the, our healthcare system is under extreme duress right now. And so to ask for help, you may find it somewhat frustrating. You may have to be very persistent. Um, but if in fact you are identifying that you need help in the home to care for the person that you're caring for, then you should be talking to home and community care support services for a start. If you're not comfortable talking to them, you could certainly be speaking to your family physician and asking that person to refer you. But um, you may not get as much as you want from them it may take a number of asks in order for you to get the support that you need, but I just want to say to you, look at it, think about how you could take advantage of the resources that are there, um, persist in asking for them, and uh, be satisfied with whatever they offer. It's never going to be enough. You won't think it's enough, but it's going to be something. And so I'm just laying that out as the very first resource. So paid for by OHIP and all the supports that you would need if you were either in hospital or at home are available that way. Now, the second resource is really another important one, Community Care Durham. And you've heard about Community Care Durham, I'm sure. They have a friendly visitors program. It's free. And they will do an intake over the phone and they will match you with a volunteer. So I just want to say right off the top that those of you who could use that help in having a volunteer come in and, and visit with your loved one, um, this is a place where you could go for that. And I will, I will give you all this information. They also provide uh, caregiver relief and that would be a PSW coming in to actually do care, uh, home care. And at that point, you can be away. Uh, you don't need to be there. There is a charge, though, $27 an hour for a two and a half hour minimum. But caregiver relief is available in this way. Companion care is also available in this way. And again, it's a PSW. Uh, $26 an hour, two and a half hour minimum, but helping with errands and meal preparation and en engaging uh, conversation uh, with the, the, the loved one. There's a housekeeping service 
$26 an hour, two and a half hours minimum. Um, but for some of you, this may be something that you don't necessarily think you need every week or every two weeks, but maybe once a month, it might not be a bad idea to have someone come in and just do that task for you. So housekeeping, foot care clinic um, is available. And uh, there's a fee of uh, $3 for the first appointment and $20 afterwards. But um, that's another thing you might think about providing. Transportation is available through uh, Community Care Durham, $12 minimum, uh, 55 cents a kilometer. <laughs> um, Anyway, that's something you know, and, and you will have all of these. Meals on Wheels, you probably all know about Meals on Wheels. Hot meal a day delivered daily, Monday to Friday, $8.75 for the meal. But frozen meals at $6.75 with a menu and in packs of seven, so that you could pay for a week's food, have it in your freezer, take it out when you feel like it, when you need it. Um, otherwise, uh, it's just there. For you now, Meals on Wheels is uh, available in in your community, but there is also a private company called Health to Heart. Um, it provides uh, individual meals or frozen meals. Uh, you can choose from a menu for these foods, and uh, I hear that the menus are really delicious and uh, attractive, and uh, some people prefer. This route is almost the same price as Meals on Wheels. Then I'm going to say adult day program. For those of you who feel that you could be taking your caregiver to a place where they could be engaging in social activities, um, this is a really important service. Um, my, I did take my husband to adult day program. Um, it meant that I could have the day it meant that he was interacting with other people. Um, there is one in Bowmanville and there's one in Oxbridge, but this required a referral from home and community care support services. So even if you don't find yourself necessarily wanting the services that uh, home and uh, community care provide, you could be still talking to them about the fact that you would like to know more about the adult day program and even the transportation that would be available to get your loved one there. So adult day program, I'm going to talk a bit about the Alzheimer's Society just because I was so impressed with the kind of support that I received from them. Uh, there is a first link coordinator who is the contact that you first talk to, who does an assessment, provides information and resources, tells you what's available. And uh, I can't say enough about them. Um, I don't know how I would have got through uh, the last couple of years uh, with my husband without their support. It helped me to understand the illness for a start. Um, it, it provided all kinds of uh, resources in terms of support and uh, may put me in linked to, uh, as I said, a caregiver support group. But after that, even after that, they linked me with a bereavement group. Once my husband died, they wanted to know if I would like to attend a bereavement group and they made a contact for me and I did do that. So the Alzheimer's Society is uh, wonderful and it doesn't, of course, you know, not just deal with Alzheimer's. It deals with the broader term of dementia and all the various types of dementia that there are, Alzheimer's being one. So any form of dementia is, uh, is, is the one that they will look after and talk to you about. Now, finally, um, I'm gonna talk to you about the Ontario Caregiver Organization. Um, I found this online, Ontario Caregiver Helpline, and they will tell you about the help that is in your area. And in actual fact, starting next week, February 21st, they are actually doing a free six week workshop series called Powerful Tools for Caregivers. So I will give you this, uh, this resource and um, you can call them up 
or you can book online uh, to take part in the six week uh, workshop series. And I think you will find it very helpful. So Ontario Caregiver Organization is another support. Uh, we've already talked about the church and some of you have said how much the church is a social support for you and a spiritual support. So I just wanna emphasize that. Don't forget, you are part of a caring community. There is social support just by virtue of you attending services. There is social support by going to church suppers and other activities that the church has. And aside from that, you might be requesting prayer. You might be requesting a visit from someone at the church. So don't hesitate to reach out and ask for that kind of thing. Finally, I'm giving you the telephone number for telehealth. And that's simply because some people have a question about health and they may have to wait to the end of the day for their doctor to return the call. So some people just call telehealth directly and they talk to a nurse. And they say what it is they're dealing with and they ask for advice and sometimes the nurses go directly <laughs> to the hospital. But on, on the other hand, they may simply say, here are some things that you can do. So telehealth is an important number to have available to yourselves. So aside then from the websites, which I'm going to give you, I've pretty well covered a number of things. I've covered identifying the needs of the person you're caring for, identifying your own needs, identifying the resources that you already have, thinking about the resources that are out there that you perhaps haven't used yet, and incorporating into your day some self-care things <laughs> that will simply give you an opportunity to slow down and clear your mind. I know this does this because um, the mindfulness meditation that I'm doing is on my Fitbit. And so I do that every morning. And when I do it, then um, it asks me if I want to note that I have done it. And it tells me what my heart rate was before I started the thing and, be and at the end of it. So every day I can see that I actually reduce my heart rate significantly sometimes from maybe 67 down to 59 or 61 or something like that. So you can see how it, uh, that mindfulness meditation does slow you down. It does help you to relax. And so I, I really encourage you to do that. So I've come to the end of what I had to offer you, except for one last little thing. And so I want to ask you again, is there something that you would like me to address that I haven't addressed? Is there anything more we should talk about? What do you think? I don't have any questions. Yeah, I don't, I don't have any uh, questions, Gail. I really enjoyed listening to your talk and I've written myself some notes. I really appreciate um, what you've told us today. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Did any? I really want to know if there's something that you just wish I'd said that I haven't said yet. No? Okay, well, um, I hope this has been helpful. Um, certainly, if you have further questions, uh, I guess I could say you could pass them through Jeff and I might be able to respond after this is over. But I will be, I will be sending you a list of the community agencies. I'll be sending you uh, the self-care activities that I spoke about. And in there, you will have the websites for the various resources that I've spoken to you about today. So I hope that's been a help. And what I'd like to do now is I'd like you to do how we started at the beginning. I'd like you to get your feet planted firmly on the floor. I'd like you to sit up straight and put your hands on your lap. Close your eyes, take a deep breath in, 
the count of four, hold it, take a deep breath out, the count of four. And now I will offer this blessing. May the blessing of love warm your heart. May the blessing of compassion give you purpose. May the blessing of friends give you comfort. And may the blessing of peace give you strength for the journey. Blessings to you all. Thanks very much, Gail. Appreciate that. And uh, thank you, everybody, for uh, coming today. And uh, I really appreciate it. And uh, hope this has helped all of you. So until next time, thanks.